Most people visit Tanzania in the dry season to catch the actions of the Great Migration. In the wet season, the rains bring a lush green scene to the savanna. Lake Manyara National Park is about 125 kilometers from Arusha, which takes around two and a half hours on the road. Getting close to the northern gate of the national park, baboons can be seen roaming the streets. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Jumbo. 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 How do you say thank you? Asante. 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 Karibu mama, karibu mama. <laughs> Reservations for park entrance was organized Asante. through our rental car provider, <laughs> so the process can be sped up at the entrance. Lake Manyara is a shallow alkaline lake that reaches a maximum of 3 meter depth and covers two thirds of the park. The lake's depth and area fluctuates significantly between dry and wet seasons. It is known for tree climbing lions, the soda ash lake, and its flamingos. Although the park is known for tree climbing lions, not many people have seen lions in the trees this day. During our game drives, we saw a large number of zebras, giraffes, impalas, buffaloes, and baboons. <laughs> Even though Lake Manyara is known for large populations of elephants, we only saw a few on the two-day safari in the park. Our guide spotted a family of lions resting in the shades. These beautiful cranes grabbed my attention immediately. They're called grey-crowned cranes. They prefer grasslands near water and are often seen in pairs. A mated couple will remain together for as long as 9 to 10 months. The male is slightly taller than the female. More than 400 species of birds can be found in this area. The park is famous for the flamingos, although we didn't have a chance to see them up close as the only road to the southern end of the lake was damaged by heavy rains. The safari experience in the park is very different to the Gorongoro Crater and Serengeti as the topography is dramatically different to the others. The second stop in Tanzania is Gorongoro Conservation Area. The NCA is about an hour and 15 minutes to the west of Lake Manyara, which is on the way to the Serengeti National Park. The conservation area covers over 8,000 square kilometers, with its main feature being the Gorongoro Crater. This volcanic crater is the largest unflooded and unbroken caldera in the world. Descending into the crater, the view we took in was simply breathtaking. Our visit was on a cloudy and rainy day. The caldera was dressed in a vibrant green with dramatic rain clouds hovering overhead. Entrance to the Gorongoro crater costs an additional 300 US dollars per vehicle on top of the NCA entrance fees. However, in our opinion, it was worth every dollar. We were in awe of the beauty of the place and would have never imagined that such a place even existed. <laughs> there is an abundance of wildlife whichever direction you looked in. The 
The animals seem to exist in a peaceful state, with gazelles running around next to sleeping lions. It is hard to imagine how different things can be at night, when the predators are in hunting mode. We saw six rhinos in the crater in just half a day. Rhinos are endangered animals that we didn't get to see elsewhere on the safaris. Our guide promised that we will see the flamingos here at Lake Magadi, and indeed, there were thousands of them gathered here on the lake. As the visiting vehicles can only stay on the paths, we couldn't get very close to them. My 600 millimeter zoom lens captured these amazing images. The drive from the NCA into the Serengeti was a very rough and wet one for us. Watching the wildebeest herds in the rain is a spectacular scene. They stood still while the heavy rain hit them. The wildebeest, also called the Nu, is a very large antelope. Every year, they follow the rains to travel from Masamara in Kenya to the southern plains of Serengeti. The decision to stay outside the northern gate of the Serengeti was not a wise one, as the animals are mostly concentrated in the central part of Serengeti during the wet season. As we rushed through the national park to get to the camp, we already spotted lots of actions. Lots of late nights and early mornings. Safaris are not as relaxing as they appear. We are on the road again after the 6 a.m. breakfast. The downside of safaris in the wet season is that the road conditions are extremely difficult. This is a path to the camp that we got stuck in the night before. The darkness and the muddy path didn't go well together. After the freak out experience we had being stuck in complete darkness, our driver has quickly learned the tricks from the camp manager to cope with the you know muddy track in the morning. <laughs> yes. It takes around 30 minutes to drive from Ikoma Gate to Central Serengeti every morning. If I were to do it again, I would stay inside the park and choose the camp location depending on the season and where the animals are. The Serengeti covers an area of 14,763 square kilometers, stretching north to Kenya and becomes the Masamara National Park. Serengeti is set to have the highest concentration of large mammals on this planet and is known for the lion population of 2,500 which is the largest concentration of lions found anywhere.
There are a few red stops in the Serengeti, which are the only places where we are allowed to get out of the cars. This is where we usually take our lunch breaks. To my surprise, each rest area is equipped with modern and clean toilets, so you don't need to worry about being attacked by a predator while you go to the loo. There is a large number of marabou stalks in the Serengeti Plains. They're very unusual looking birds that live in large groups near sources of food. They're scavengers and feed on carrion and scrubs. We often see them perched on this boat tree looking like tree ornaments. Driving through this flooded bridge was an experience I would have liked to avoid every day, as so many hippos and crocodiles dwell here. Our guide told us that apparently hippos kill more lives than lions in Africa. Giraffes are one of the most commonly seen animals in the Serengeti. They're so elegant that we never got tired of watching them. They consume around 30 to 60 kilograms of leaves a day and can spend up to 14 hours a day eating, choosing the preferred vegetation. And they only sleep one hour a day. They have the longest eyelashes to protect them from the twigs and thorns while they're eating. They can run up to 50 kilometers an hour on solid ground, but when the ground is wet and soft, they can risk breaking a leg or slipping. The young giraffes often join a bachelor group and travel through the savanna. There is a clear ranking in the herd, which was determined through a fight. I wasn't expecting to see tree climbing lions in the Serengeti, but this seems to be quite a common scene. There are two lion nests resting in this tree. One eventually got sick of the noises of the car engines and came down to seek an alternative hideout. There is a large number of lions in the Serengeti. On the day we drove from the NCA into the Serengeti, we counted 15 lions in total. This cheetah made out day. He popped out of the tall grass for a few seconds and bolted suddenly. It was amazing to watch this powerful and agile animal disappear into the plain. He was clearly hungry and his hunting was interrupted by us humans. Wet season brings the onset of rains that nourish the vegetations in the winter dry land. There is sufficient water throughout the plains for the animals without having to seek permanent water sources. For game viewing, the dry seasons provide the opportunities to see the animals gathering near the water sources. They're also easier to spot when the grasses are not so tall. This makes animal spotting a bit harder in the wet season when the animals are scattered around and the tall grasses provide excellent cover for the smaller animals. Three days in the Serengeti seemed to be a good amount of time. Originally, I wanted to do a self-drive trip, but quickly realized that all safari vehicles are manual cars. The drive from the Gorongoro crater to the Nabi gate of Serengeti is a two and a half hour drive, half of which is a dusty and corrugated track. The wet season also made many tracks inside the Serengeti inaccessible due to the roads being flooded or too muddy to drive through. In the end, I was glad that we asked for a driver guide to take us around, which made things a lot less stressful. 
We look forward to coming back here in the dry season to see the great migration next time. <laughs>